All right, everyone, we're going to do a little model. This is called the GAM model, generalized additive model. And the goal here is to simply do one thing and one thing only, and that is to break away from our dependence on the p-value. Although this model will give a p-value, we're going to look at the deviance explained. I love the word deviance. So this is pretty interesting. We're just going to use the conventional data set I always use because I think, you know, students and others can wrap there kind of head around it it's pretty easy to understand we got two variables here we're going to use consumption of ice cream and temperature outside does the temperature outside lead to more consumption of ice cream so just like the lm function it's set up exactly the same thing uh as i got it out of my library here mgcv is mgcv that's a difficult word to say <laughs> those letters in a row so that's the package. You install it, then you get it out of the library. You should know that by now. But if not, just remember, just install package. And then, as you probably remember, install packages. But when you do install it, you have to put it in quotes. And then when you get it out of the library, you don't. So this is a pretty cool package. So we'll call it, let's say, for example, eat ice. All right, so we're going to call it eat ice, and we're going to use just the gam function like we would the lm function. And it's the exact same thing, just with a little twist as I was running it before up there. I was doing without uh, the s and with the s, which is a pretty interesting, um, well, we'll just take a look. So it's just conventionally the same. Dependent response variable consumption, tia tilde. But then, interestingly enough, we've got, what is this S around temp? That's, we're doing a smooth spline here to go into, so it's like not necessarily linear, but these are quantitative continuous variables, consumption, as you can see in temperature, but you can do this as well with the GLM function, uh, let's just say temp was a nominal variable, independent variable like gender and consumption was still linear, that's perfectly fine, right? But you can do it with both according to the research. I have read linear and linear quantitative continuous variables and also nominal, ordinal, etc. So that's what we're going to get into later on. But this for right now is just to kind of wean us away from the p-value. So you've got gam and then you've got consumption, which is the independent, uh, the dependent variable, sorry, response. And then you've got temp, which now is just closed with an S to show that this is a GAM model. And then data equals ice cream. So same setup summary as you would with the LM, GLM functions, the other functions, and over, etc. So you basically eat ice. And what's interesting about this is you still get all the stuff you know about. Like, for example, here is the p-value. Here is the, and it even gives an F, interesting. But we want to wean our way away from all these things and then start looking at alternative measurements. So we see that the p-value obviously is with the three stars significant, which is important. Anything under 0 0.05, conventionally speaking, is statistically significant. Uh, that is the lower the better because it's against the null, how likely you are to see the null being true or to other extreme um, results. But this is interesting because look at this, 68.0. 1%. 68 is very high amount being explained in this model. So the deviance explained, the more the better, and 68 is very good. So we can conclude, in addition to using the overused p-value, p-value is still important, but is it a little overused? Yes. We can use alternative models like the GAM model to have more confidence in our results. Now, what's a good deviance explained? This is one of the reasons why I think the p-value still 
is very, very popular because once you get below 0 0.05, it's not an intersubjective understanding. It's It either is statistically significant with the p-value or it isn't. This and other measurements, you get into kind of a little subjectivity. What is good deviance explained? There is no one right answer. There is no direct threshold over that, but I'd say anything above uh, uh, 50 or, you know, 60%, 68% is very, very good, we can conclude. So the goal here is to look at alternative models, in this case, the generalized additive model, GAM model, to measure something different than the p-value, standard error, uh, estimate, etc. This goal here is to give an alternative to those measurements and another one so you have more confidence in your results. And in this case, we have deviance explained with the GAM model, very easy to do, which is 68.1%. Very good. Thanks a lot for listening, everyone, and take care out there.